Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today we're going to be taking a look at past lessons. Uh, basically what we can take from past lessons to help us out today. And basically combine a, a bunch of past lessons to get cheats that are actually hard to do in certain games. And um, what we're going to be taking a look at today is Space Hulk. And I'm going to get two different cheats. Today we're going to be getting... Uh, infinite stamina where we can run infinitely and we're going to see it's very difficult to write a script for this so we're going to have to think outside the box and maybe try a different way to do it because it's going through uh, an opt code that has thousands of addresses and uh, it can be a major pain to uh, backtrace it and find a source for it because you know it could cause all kinds of lags and problems so we're going to see if there's maybe another way we can you know send that information to our or send that information to our sprint to have an infinite also we're going to take a look at no cooldowns for our specials we got a special every time we use a special uh, a timer starts and it starts counting down and we need to find that this is another classic example though of a display versus an internal because what you're going to find out is our display is doing one thing and our internal is doing something entirely different or the complete opposite the display is counting down and we're going to find out that our internal is actually counting up. So we're going to take a look at that and see how we can uh, find that and that's what we're going to be showing today. So stick around and go ahead and bring everything up and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this particular tutorial, now I know I say this all the time, do not try to find your cheats in tutorial mode. I mean, you can for most games, but a lot of times the tutorial is different and you know it's not being calculated the same way sometimes it's you know different parts of memory are being accessed to uh, maybe give you infinite health you know while it's trying to teach you how to control the game or how to move in the game or whatever uh, so I always say wait till you're actually in the main game because that will be the main functions in use at that time uh, but this game you can actually hack it in tutorial and it still carries over to the the new game I don't know for how far or anything like that but uh, for our purposes here we're just going to go into tutorial mode so we're just not constantly having to fight enemies or something while we're trying to do stuff so also I've turned the volume way down on this I've turned it way down so it's not bleeding through so I don't know how much you'll be able to hear it or if you'll be able to hear it at all but you know I've had a lot of problems with bleed through on to the mic that I use and everything where it's that the music is just extremely loud and there's no way to turn it down because it's bleeding through over to the mic channel I don't know why I didn't used to do that but uh, I may I guess I need to update Camtasia or something or maybe some driver affecting it I don't know so just give it a second let this go ahead and load up so let's see if you look here if we run our stamina is on the right hand side and it's got a bar and it slowly regenerates back up there we go so that's how that's operating that's good that'll help us find it because we can actually go down in value and then slowly back up so we should be able to find that fairly quickly so what I want to do just do a float unknown value. We don't know if that's a thousand. We don't know if it's a hundred. We don't know if it's five hundred. We don't know what that value is. So let's let's run a little bit and get it all the way down. Let's get it as far down as we can. Let's get it down about right there and let's see if we can pause the game. Does it pause it? It's not filling back up. Now, now it starts again. Okay, good. So we know that our stamina value is now paused. So we're going to put decrease value. Let's put it on simple values to take out these exponential values. There we go. Alright, resume. Let it start going up. Pause it. There we go. And I'm using my hotkeys basically. I'm using uh, unchanged hotkey which I assign to the minus key on my keyboard. Alright, so let's resume. It's filling back up. We're just going to mash increased. 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 And let it go all the way to the top here. 
all the way to the top we're going to go increased and now unchanged all right now let's take a look and see what we got over here well that those two right there look interesting to me 100 100 that's usually typical of stamina so let's see which one well first of all let's make sure that that is correct so let's just freeze both of them and run and see if it holds and if you look it does it completely holds it so one of those is the correct value one's a display value which is that little bar you probably see on your screen right there the other is the internal value which feeds that information to all display codes so let's see which is which let's turn one of them on and it's still holding so we know the top one is the internal code that's the correct one right here and just to show you if I freeze the bottom one and undo the top one it goes down see so that's a display it's completely useless to us alrighty let it fill up and what we want to do let me get rid of that so I don't confuse anybody let's put a debugger on that one Oh, here we go again. And if you remember from our ammo, it looks like that's going through the same type address. So I think a lot of values are going through there. And when we run, we do have something that pops up. And it's just a, a compares. A co miss is a compare, but it's comparing an XMMO registry. So it looks like these are the only things that are really right. This is the only one that's really writing to it. Let's just go take a look at it. Ah, oh, crap. And it's right near a return and only four values. Ooh, that's, we can't really put a script there. Mm. And we can't really put it here either because it's only being accessed one time. And that's when we start running. I turned it off. Let me let me do it again. Hang on. Yeah, that's only being accessed when we run. So even if we moved 100 in there, it's not going to do any good because it's only being accessed when we actually just start running it's not constantly being accessed while we're running or when we stop this is the one these are the two that are constantly being accessed and this is where we are right now so let's go to let's just see what it looks like holy guacamole look look at that oh sh mm. Yeah, usually that's indicative. When you see stuff like that, that's usually indicative of that's everything's going through that. Now, you could do this several ways. Uh, we could possibly just separate out this address here and just backtrace it a little bit farther down the code. But man, it's going to be such a mess. Um, but we got to figure out a different way we could possibly do it. We could possibly look up a pointer for this and then just have cheated and find it all the time. Also, another pain. Oh, let's see here. Let's go back to this right here. Let me turn this off. We we may still can use this. We can either do we can have it move 100 into our stamina address, which that's it right there, and then we can maybe do a create thread or use Lua to create a timer to constantly write 100 into there. You know why don't we do that? Why don't we just try that? It's easier. We ain't got to do a bunch of back tracing, and it'll still get the job done. Let's just make sure that there's no more addresses going through that. Doesn't appear to be. Okay, good. All right. So this may work for us. That's obviously our stamina, and it only accesses when we actually start running. That's the only time it's access. So we need it to be constantly writing our value into this address right here. Uh, I like doing it this way before we go do major backtracing and all that mess. I mean, there's another way I could possibly do it to achieve the same results that may be a little easier. I usually go that route. 
let's just go stamina one just had cheat engine find the address for us by doing an injection copy we've learned injection copies and I'll put it in the upper right hand corner basically all I'm going to do is make a label and name it something and I'm just going to put stem one like that we do need to register a symbol because we're going to use this outside of the script we're going to call it stem one and I'm not going to allocate different memory port I'm just going to use new mem allocated memory port it works it's fine just make sure you're not doing it where it's actually going to interfere with the running of the code or anything so we have it jump return so we put it somewhere here it's not going to affect it so. and this is where we're just storing our value it's going to assign it an address and store the value uh, store our address excuse me store the value there and that's what we want the address that's storing that value <coughs> and this is how we do it we know RCX is holding the base address of stamina. We can check that over here. RCX is holding the base address. And if we go back to our, there we go. If we go back to our cheat table. You can see this is our stamina address. It's in 6330. RCX is the base address ending in 5580. So 5580 in hex plus db0 will equal 6330 so that's how it's calculated so what we can do we can just have cheat engine move into stem one our base address of rcx just like that let's go ahead and assign that to the current cheat table and we'll just call this stamina lookup just so we know what that code's doing right now let's turn it on but we, don't, we need a way to see it so. so let's put our brackets we need the value which means we want the value of that address whatever the value is holding and what was our offset db0 it is a float value and let's put a stamina And when we start to run, this should find our stamina address and value. So it should populate from this to this. Watch. And that's injection copies. And there it is. See that? So it does find our value just fine. So we, since it does find our value just fine, we can actually manipulate it there. Let's do it with Lua. Let's Instead of a create thread, let's just use Lua to create a timer instead. Let's turn that back off. And what we can do is have that timer constantly write 100 to it. Let me save what I got, and let me, and I'll be right back with you. Sorry, my pal Stephen Chapman came out with a new vid. That's two new vids in two days. Man, I was so happy to see that. And this one here, I had to go watch it, so I had to take a little break from recording. And this is how to patch it that no CD required. And it's just awesome stuff. So if you have not seen that, I'm going to put that link in the description. It is incredible. Thank you, Stephen. That was great. Great, great, great. But the reason I came to YouTube is we're going to be using uh, the Lua that I was talking about to, uh, you know, constantly write to our stamina address. And to do that, we're going to use our symbol name. Now, I've got a tutorial that I'm going to link in the upper right-hand corner. I also have it in the description. And I'm going to go over to my channel. And I'm going to show you what vid it is because... I'm going to use the template that I provided for you there. There ain't no sense in just rewriting the whole thing when we don't have to. And it's down here in auto value writing. So we can just go over to it and I'll pause it. So we don't have to hear me speak over myself. And if you look down in, I usually provide these when I'm introducing a template. And here is the template that we're going to be using right here. But I'm going to use it within the same script. So I'm just going to copy this part right here. I'm just going to use it in the same script. Now my pal, um, Free ER, he told me, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of these, it's better to do it a different way by get memrec ID. I'm still not 100% on everything involved with and how to do that. So I may need to uh, start picking his brain with some more questions and before I start introducing that because I rarely use this 
but uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that at a later date and we'll, we'll learn a different way to go about this. So I like to show all different ways. So what I want to do is come down here below our main functions here. And here's the address that is jumping to our allocated memory. I'm just going to stick it underneath here. I'm just going to separate them so that everybody knows this is just completely separate. And we're going to be doing this in Lua. And this is how you let Cheat Engine know that you're going to be doing in Lua. You use the little braces with the dollar sign and then just say Lua. Close brace. And we're just going to paste in what we've already, our, our little template right here it's just assigning a variable and I'm not going to go through all this because in that very vid I went over every little thing step by step okay so down here we want to close it off and I'm just going to put a uh, little well hang on that'll confuse somebody go back to ASN here disable go back to Lua and we need to destroy that timer so we'll just put timer dot destroy parentheses and then we'll go back to assembly language so it can go ahead and close everything on out and restore everything back to normal okay so we're basically what we're doing is we're creating a timer so we assigned it a variable name it can be any name you want really and we need to set how fast this timer is going to go and 1000 will equal one second so 100 equals a tenth of a second or whatever and I'm not doing it. And right here is our little template, and we just need to fill in. And I gave you examples on how to do it. If you're using a symbol, this is what you want to use. If you're using the module address, this is what you want to use. But we're using a symbol, so we're going to be using this template right here. So my symbol name, if you remember, is stamina1. So we're just going to stick that in the middle here stamina one and we need our offset which is db0 so right outside the little brackets here we're going to put plus db0 and what else do we need we need the value we want it to write so outside of here we're going to put a comma and we want to write 100 just like that that should be good to go so these lessons are always good I always put th uh, little templates in there especially if I'm going over something like with Lua or something or introducing you to a new script of some type I will always give you a way to have a template and it's always good you can always go back to it and re-reference it reference it I always recommend to really keep you like a, a notepad like with notepad plus plus and keep a lot of your Lua or any type of uh, scripts that you probably going to use quite frequently and that way it saves you from having just to come up with it on, off the top of your head save you some time and that's what I do so and that's why I did it this way so I'll leave that up for you in the upper right hand corner and that's basically that should be all we need to do for it to continue to write 100 to our stamina address this is the base address plus the offset which equals the stamina address so let's go ahead and hit OK and I'm going to take our stamina down to about 50. It's going up and I'm going to turn it on. Okay. And the reason it's not hitting because it hasn't assigned the address to it because we have to run first. Remember we did it in a section of memory. It's only accessed when we actually run. So let's run. And take a look at our stamina. It's not going down. We don't have anything froze. So our Lua script is working. So that's good. So we want to turn it back off just to make sure that it will continue to, and it destroyed our timer, and it goes back down. So now we have a work a workaround without having to do a lot of backtracing and everything to you know find where stamina separates, and just saved us a bunch of time in doing so. So we turn it back on, and boom, we got infinite stamina right here. Down here, if you take a look, you'll see we have specials. We got one which is like an aura, and we got another which is like a lightning bolt, and you see we have a cooldown period we got to wait for each. If we match the first one, it starts at five, and it counts down for four, three, two, one. Well, we want infinite cooldowns. So how do we find that? 
well to save you some time and everything uh, normally we would start we see it's counting down so we would start usually timers are going to be in a float value okay I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit but what we're going to do now is we're going to try to find these cooldown timers you see his special skills down here if I hit one it starts a timer value we got to wait that value before we're able to use it again as you can hear and as soon as it recharges boom we can use it again and so we want to find that timer value so we can nullify it and we can use it as many times we want whenever we want and basically that's what we're going to do here and if you notice I went ahead and saved a little time now our normal thing that we do when we find a timer value and I'll put those links in the description on how to find timer values and I had a whole complete three-part series on it is basically what we do is well we see what the display is doing so we usually copy what the display is doing and when we start it up we do an unknown float scan I usually start with float it's usually on a float or double and then I just go decrease value decrease value decrease value decrease value the problem that we have with that you see how quick that timer is sometimes it's better to wait on something that lasts a lot longer so you got more time to work with because it's possible that the timer could change addresses the next time it's engaged if that happens you're not going to find it if you don't find it right off the bat the first time you see what I'm saying if it uh, if it changes addresses and you're still in the in the scan process over here in cheat engine then it's it's at a new address you're not going to find it and that's best when to use either speed hack or wait till you have something that lasts a, or has a bigger timer but in this game it, it it uses the same address each time so that that's good so we can still find it I went ahead and did uh, a float value on unknown initial value and I just went down 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 until I came across this right here none of the other addresses worked whatsoever and actually this one doesn't work you'll see in just a moment that this is a display value and I'm going to show you so we're going to go ahead and hit it and you see it matches perfectly with what's on the screen and it's counting down but it does not freeze it it does not lock it it does not change it and if you was to go find the opcode this is going through and modify that it still waits that amount of time before you can use it again what it will do if you go not knock out what's writing to it which I'll do right now and show you you see this right here if you go knock this out show it in the disassembler here's what's writing to it and if I knock this out which means it will not write to it any longer you'll see what it does it's just a graphical display it just freezes it there however I can use it and it just freezes the graphical display and I still have to wait that time limit and it does it kind of screws up the sound effects and everything else but as you see it still counts it's still counting so that is not our internal code and so we try again we try with a different value value type or something like that decrease decrease and it's still you will not find it so we have to try other means so what else can we do well come to find out it the internal code is actually starting from zero and counting up while our display is counting down so as you can see right now our display and our internal are going to be the exact same but when they begin one is going to start high the other one is going to stay at zero and count up to that value so that's what we're going to find now so let's go ahead and start it it's another scenario where the internal and displays do not match and they're not in sync with each other so unknown initial value okay now we're going to go increase value so if you take a look increase value let it do its thing might take it a minute <clears throat> ok 
okay so we did unchanged value so let's hit it again increase value hit it again let's just let it count all the way back and you see we've kind of screwed up anyway so it's just not going back down to one but it's it's now available again so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to go decrease value and we're just going to keep doing this over and over again until we weed them down to something we can try so i'm going to go ahead and pause this till i get to it and then i'll be right back with you okay so i was just continuing off camera exactly what i was doing starting it over with decreased value i'm sorry with uh decreased value yeah letting the timer run down but it's the internals actually counting up and i just kept hitting increase till we get down to a few not 33 we can try so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add those to the cheat table i'm just going to freeze them all and just see if that affects anything take a look at our timer So one of these is correct. We more than waited the five seconds, so it should have went back down. So we're going to try to find that correct value. So we know that the timer value, the correct internal timer value is in here somewhere. So we're just going to need to use the process of elimination. Oops. And you see it went back to normal. So it's one of these addresses down here. So I can get rid of all these up here. There we go. So one of these is the correct value. So I want to start it again. And we're just going to freeze a little bit at a time. About half. See if that affects anything. Still counting down. So we know it wasn't those. All right. So let's freeze half more. Nope, still counting down. So we're just going to let it start all the way back up. So we know it's got to be one of these bottom three right here. These are still counting. This one's stuck so I'm willing to bet you it's this one right here let's freeze that one. Oh, and take a look no timer so if we freeze it at that value look at that I believe that's it folks all right so let's see what's accessing this address we'll turn it back off Let's see what's going on with it. We can see everything that's being accessed. This is when we hit the button. That's interesting. It looks like it, that's what's moving our zero into it. And this is actually the timer that's counting. What we'd like to do is prevent it from ever getting to here to do the calculations to increase the value. And usually, let me just see here. And we can tell by over here what's being accessed and when. One's being constantly when it's the timer's running and one's only doing it when we press the button. So we press the button, you see these right here were only accessed when we mash the button. These are being accessed when the timer's actually going. So it looks like this is what's writing to the timer. So we can do it several ways, but I'm gonna see what happens if I prevent zero from ever moving into the address in other words we'll just keep it at whatever value it's holding like we, we done originally because that gives us what we want just like that it's putting zero in there however it's writing the top value right back in there and we know we're going to have different timer values because we got one here and then we'll have a third slot later and we got a fourth slot there so we can assume that they'll probably be going through this, these op codes as well. So what would happen if I just knock this out right here and prevent zero from ever being moved into there? Let me go back and make sure that I don't have 
Okay, make sure that's unticked. It stays the same. Let's take a look at it. Make sure that value doesn't change. Let's see what happens. Oh, and take a look. Immediately goes back. So just mopping out that one address, we have no cooldown. So that's easy. Awesome. We can just do a, a direct uh, byte manipulation on this one. Which I will put that tutorial in the upper right hand corner as well. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do an AOB injection. I'm just going to call this cooldown. We see here we got all these bytes. That's a hell of a lot of bytes. We don't need to allocate memory for this. We're just mopping it out. So to do a direct byte manipulation, we can take out the allocation stuff. We'll keep the register symbol. <clears throat> we can go ahead and take these out right here. And we see the byte structure. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes. And you see that opcode is 10 bytes long. These are actually the instructions in byte form. That's what the computer actually reads. This just assembled or compiled to show us what these bytes are doing what it is for us to be able to read <coughs> so we need 10 knops and we know that knop is nine zero so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's your one two three four five six seven eight nine, ten. okay very good so let's assign that to the current cheat table and when we turn it on, we just want to make sure that it will turn all those to knops and it will restore it. We want to put this uh, uh, no cooldown test. Move that up a little bit. Let's turn it on, and you see here it knocked out our address. Will it restore it back? Yes, it does. So that looks good to go. And let's see. And take a look. No cooldowns for our specials. We can just use them as many times as we want. So infinite ammo, infinite stamina. And we have we can use our special maneuvers anytime we want without having to do any type of weight. Let's turn it back off. And we see here that the timer starts back. Very good. So that's just to get us. Uh, get started. I was going to do a Let's Hack series on this game. That's basically what it started out being, but just kind of decided against it. Uh, but just wanted to show that these past lessons, I know I'm using a specific game when I teach you these things and show you these things, but these techniques can be used for any game. And some games, every game is different. Some techniques may work great for one game and not work for another. That's when you combine and use different techniques that we've learned. That's why we learn different ways of doing things, of finding values, manipulating those values, and, and other things like that. So that's what these lessons are designed around, not just for a specific game, but techniques that can be used for any game. So keep that in mind, all right? And that's basically what I wanted you to get out of this lesson. We've used past lessons to help us with harder things to do in this game that just can't do maybe by normal means or what we consider normal game hacking. So you have to do things that are a little outside the box. And those ain't the only way to do that for stamina and things like that. There are other ways you can do that too. But that's the way that was the quickest and easiest. And, you know, we could just get on with our game or get on with our game hacking. I want to go ahead and thank my partners and my donators, which are also considered partners. Without these guys, Cheat the Game would be no more. And so I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Each one of them this past month got a free copy of Hand of Fate 2, which if you remember in my past uh, videos, uh, using DN Spy and Cheating Together, is one of the better games I've come across to be able to practice on. Uh, it's got some easy stuff for the very 
beginner and it's got some challenging things in there for you to be able to find uh, for more intermediate to advanced. So it is a great game for all levels uh, to be able to practice your skills on and to be able to enhance your skills with. And so each one of them got a free copy of that compliments of CTG. If you would like to become a Patreon partner, I'll allow you access to everything they have access to as well on the cost of dollar. And you can also donate at the PayPal account as well. And I'll leave those links for you in the description. So you know all the help is greatly appreciated it really helps us out a bunch it helps us keep going keep the website going and, and everything and i really really appreciate it all you guys that come out watch these vids and drop a like on it it really helps us out tremendously uh you two are uh, very valued assets to me and i really appreciate it so make sure to come join us over at our facebook page and also discord and our website and all those links are in the description. We'd love to have you on the Facebook channel. We do ask that you please have a three month old account. That's uh, our efforts to keep out spammers and things like that. If you do not have a three month old account but still like to be a part of it, uh, you will need to write us at ctgaccess101 at gmail to say I don't have a three month account but I would really like to be a part of the Facebook group. And we'll go ahead and admit you on it. Okay. So just let us know. We enjoy having you and we all learn together. We all have fun together. And we would love for you to be a part of it as well. All right, guys, I'm out of here. That's all I got time for. Uh, we'll, we'll kick back into it at a later date, and we'll get into some more things that I've been working on here lately. So I'll show you some more ways to find hard-to-find values in the future also. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. You all take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care now.